Good morning, everyone. My name is Romain Langlais, and I'm working at Oracle Public Cloud. I'm part of the network virtualization team. We are doing a full-blown network virtualization stack from scratch for Oracle Compute Service, which is our IaaS service at Oracle. So that's a service that's in production and that we offer to customers right now. I'd like to start with kind of a complaint. I'm kind of disappointed with the conference so far. We are in an open vSwitch conference, and I've seen almost no presentation yesterday with flows on the slides. What, what's wrong? So something changed. And I'm here to, to fix that. So I hope you like flows, because my whole presentation will be about a single flow, this guy here. Oh, it's, a beauty. it's a beauty, right? Um, and a few of its friends, too. This flow is actually very important for us because our network virtualization system is a virtual layer-free system. And what's most important in a layer-free system is the forwarding decision. How do you pick the next hop for your flow? <coughs> and that's what this flow does, actually. This is the flow, at least the pattern of this flow is what determines the next hop for each flow in our system. It's a bit intimidating, so what I will do in this talk is build it step by step and see what all those things are and why they are there, why they need to be there. We need to start with a mental model of our system. Picture in your mind a virtual router on a host. That virtual router has ports. They can be tunnels, they can be virtual interfaces, local ports, and they have a status. They can be up or down. And the router has a routing table. We'll focus just on the forwarding decisions here. So we are focusing on how does the router look up the routing table to pick the next stop for a flow. What's a bit special about our routing tables, you have several ways of uh, structuring your routing table. Our routes have three elements. They have a prefix. They have a next, next hop, which is an open flow port. And they have an administrative distance. So admin distance here is a value 0, 1, 2 to give priorities uh, between routes. I'll give you an example. Here in this example, we have five routes in the table. And we have three distinct prefixes. We have a slash 32, we have a slash 16, and we have a default route, 0 slash 0. You see, for each route, we have one next hop open flow port, and we have an admin distance. Let's look closely at the slash 16 here. We see we have three times the same prefix. We have three routes of the same prefix. And they have different next hops and different administrative distances. So what happens if B and C are up? We'll do ECMP. So we will load balance the flows across B and C. If only B is up, then everything goes to B for this prefix. If both B and C are down, then we fall back to the third route which administrative distance too, because it's lower priority. So that's, I think that's kind of unique among the, uh, network virtualization systems where usually people don't do administrative distances, but it's an extremely powerful construct here. And of course, if, if A is not reachable either, then we fall back to the default route 0 slash 0. So how do we do this lookup? I mean, it's, it's easy on paper, but how do we do that with OpenFlow and OpenVSwitch? We first need to do a longest prefix match. That's the easy part. You just match the destination address against your prefix, right? Network, uh, network destination equal your prefix. Now we have a problem with OpenFlow. We need to make it deterministic. So we need to do two things. First, we need to have only one flow for each prefix. Even though we had three routes with a slash 16, the same slash 16 prefix, we need to have a single flow for it. If we had multiple flows, it would be non-deterministic. The second thing is to enforce longest, matching on longest prefix first, we need to add priorities into the flows. So in this case, we, we, we just decide, okay, it's 200 plus the prefix length. So we have, for instance, for the slash 16, it's going to be 216. Which means that our flows will have a priority between 200 for slash 0 and 200, uh, 328 for slash 128, because we support IPv6 too. So we have 129 priorities there. So that's how you do longest prefix match in OpenFlow. That was the easy part. The problem that we have now is that some of the routes might not be reachable. Some of the ports may be down. 
So it's actually an iterative process. You need to loop in there. So you might need to resubmit into this table again and again if the ports are down. Now it becomes tricky. Really what we would like to do is to have a register there, which is the currently matched prefix length, right? We would like to say, for instance, for the slash 16 that, okay, register seven is lower than 17, or, or greater than 15, actually. Fortunately, you can't do that with open flow. You can only do equality bit matches. So what we do is we do a giant bitmap. So we have 129 bits in there, one for each possible prefix length. So if a bit is set to one in there, for instance, the bit for slash 16 is there, then the flows for a slash 16 prefix will be allowed to match. If it's set to zero, then it will not match, okay? So the first thing we need to do is when we enter our table, our lookup table, we need to set all those bits to one because at the beginning, we can match everything. So before entering table n, a table n minus one for instance, you have a bunch of load actions to put, set all the bits to one. And then we need to do two things in our flow here. First, we need to match on the bit for the prefix length. So here it's a flow for slash 16. We need to match on the bit for slash 16. In this case, it's register five, bit zero, x, one, and four zeros. So this uh, will eliminate if this bit is set to zero, which means that we already uh, evaluated prefix length down to slash 16. This flow will not match and will match another, another flow. Now, when we resubmit, we want to make sure that if this flow matched, next time it will not match anymore. So what we do is we need, before we go further, we go, do a go to table, we need to set 16 bits to one and everybody else to zero. We need 16 bits for the length slash zero to slash 15. That's why we set register five, zero X, FFFF. That's 16 bits there. And everything else is set to zero. So next time we resubmit, this flow will not match anymore. So with this, we have longest prefix match with an iterative process. So next time we resubmit, we will make sure that we match only shorter prefix lengths. And it, it shrinks every time. And if it goes down to zero, like in the, every bit is set to zero, then we drop the packet and we send an ACMP. So far, so good. Now it's, uh, it's a real hard part is we need to do a bunch of things at the same time. But before, I would like to make another rant about OVS. Um, so the problem you see is that we have a huge bitmap of 129 bits. We are wasting half of our registers right away. It's 442 bit registers plus one bit that's wasted right away. I don't think there's much we can do there. Hmm? Okay. Justin said he's got, just got doubled, so that's good news for us because we were running a little tight there. Uh, we wasted half of it. And this is the only solution we found for this problem. The second problem that we have is there is a resubmit limit uh, in, in OVS. OVS has this kind of protection to prevent infinite loops. And I think by default it's set to 64. So we can do at most 64 resubmits in OVS. And so the bad news is that everything counts, both the resubmits and the go-to tables, as far as I know. Which means with 64, we can do, say, 30, 30 route lookups. And when you are doing IPv6, you might, in the worst case, you want to do 129 lookups, in the worst case. Which means at least 258 resubmits. Plus, you have tables on the side, which means you might do 300 resubmits, actually. So I don't think it would be too harmful to increase this constant, but like 64 is kind of limiting for, for customers right now. I don't think it will be very impactful. We can discuss about it later. Now the real hard part is, okay, we need to find, now we, we have flows that match for each prefix. We have a longest prefix match. We need to select the output port. And the way we do it is we actually do a selection for each administrative distance because we don't know a priori which distance will win, which distance will have actually a port that's reachable for, for a given prefix. So what we do is, for each distance, 0, 1, 2, we do one bundle load to select a port. So when this flow finishes executing, when it jumps to the next table, it will have three half registers set. 
one register with an output port at distance zero, one register with a port at distance one, and one at distance two. And there might be none, which means we found no port for a specific distance. So let's take our example here, for our slash 16 prefix in the example. We had no route at distance zero. So here we just do a load of OFPP down directly into the register. There's no need to do a bundle load because we have no port to select. For distance one, we had two routes. Remember, we had a route to B, a route to C. So here we do one bundle load with two slaves, B and C. So this does two things. First, it checks whether B and or C are up. If both are up, bundle load will hash the flow and pick B or C based on the hash. That's how we do ECMP. And it will put the winning port into the register. If only B is up, it will select B, put it in the port, in the register, etc. If both are down, it will write OFPP down into the register. And finally, we, have, we had one route at distance two, going to A, and here we still do a bundle load, but with just one slave. Which may, and the bundle load will just check whether A is up or not. If it's up, it puts A into the register. If it's not, it puts none in there. So when, we, when this uh, flow jumps into table N plus one, we'll have three half registers with three possible ports in those registers. And now we need to, to choose, and we need to enforce the, uh, the priorities between administrative distances. And that's done in the next table, in table N plus one. The algorithm is pretty simple um, from, a, from a high level. If the distance zero port is not known, we select it. Otherwise, if the distance one port is not known, we select it. Otherwise, if the distance two port is not known, we select it. Otherwise, we need to resubmit. It means we didn't find a reachable route for this prefix. So we resubmit back to table one and we try a shorter prefix. So that looks easy, but the problem, you cannot do that directly with OpenFlow because you cannot do is not equal something in OpenFlow. So we need to reverse the logic. We need to, do, to start from the bottom. So our highest priority flow will do if all ports are none, then we resubmit. Otherwise, if distance zero and distance one are none, then distance two is not none, and we'll use that. Otherwise, if distance zero is none, then distance one is not none, and we use that. Otherwise, we use a distance zero port. So this enforces that if you have a distance zero port that is not known, we'll use it for the output. That's, that's a winner. So that enforces kind of the, uh, the priorities among administrative distances. I'd just like to recap and put everything together. I think now it starts to make sense, especially maybe the color helps as well. Um, so in green, we have the longest prefix match. We need to do priorities. We need to do one flow per prefix. In orange, this is a bitmap trick to, uh, to do the iterative process for, for the lookup, to make sure we have a shrinking prefix length every time we resubmit. And in blue, this is the magic where we do everything at the same time. We, we uh, filter out the ports, the routes that are not reachable. That's where we eliminate the unreachable routes. We do ECMP at the same level of administrative distance and we enforce the ordering among, among routes according to administrative distance. That's also in coordination with table N plus one. So that's pretty neat, and there's something I wanted to point out also, is that we do all that completely proactive. We program those flows, and then the control plane completely steps back. The control plane can actually crash, and this is purely done by OVS at this point. It's, um, so for instance, detecting that uh, a node is unreachable, we can do it with BFD, it will bring the port down, and then the bundle load can pick that up and eliminate the route, actually. The control plane is completely out of the picture. So it's kind of an extreme end of the spectrum where we, this is very a purely proactive system. And that scales, that scales really well. Um, so this is actually the conclusion of this, of this talk. I, I hope you liked that. <laughs> We had a lot of fun doing that, and I hope you had fun too watching this. And I will be very happy to answer the questions that you have.